subscribe, love, like. We're sponsored by the Spunk Lube and rebroadcast by the Demon Seed Radio Network. We could not do any of this without you guys. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, please give us that bump. Sexy People Podcast. I'm Dan Fergalette. I'm uh, joined with my co-host, uh, Leanne Von Lux. Uh, we're just going to keep changing your name and adding <laughs> more things to it. And uh, the lovely Elizabeth. Um, I, I'm going to have you introduce yourself because there's a lot of complexity to what you were saying about how you define yourself. So yeah, it can be a little confusing, who but, are uh, <laughs> who am I? Who are what you? A loaded question. <laughs> I know. Just do the whole podcast for us. Who are you? <laughs> well, I'm a nude model professionally. Um, I have a background as a stripper and also I would say like a sugar baby here and there. I go by Elizabeth, but you can call me Liz for short. I'm Sack of Antlers on Instagram. Yeah. Um, but my journey to get to this point in my life has been very interesting. And definitely I'm not the kind of average girl next door that I may appear to be. Yes. Okay. So when <laughs> I met Liz, it was at a workshop in PA, um, mm -hmm. this winter jam that goes on. It's a Stacey, Stace Bernard Photography host at Scott Church Studio. Um, it's a huge warehouse studio. Amazing. Lots, it, beautiful place. Lots of photographers, lots of models. I was terrified because of COVID, but it, <laughs> it all worked out well. We did not end up being a super spreading event. So that worked. Um, <laughs> we we're going to be shooting there for two days. And Stace said, you know, you're going to room with two other girls. Is that okay? I was like, yeah, but I'd love to know who the girls are because again, COVID. <laughs> And, you know, I want to know, is my stuff safe? These are things that models and dancers are always worried about, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm, rooming for sure. And he's like, you're, de you're definitely going to be in a room with Rebecca Lawrence because I've known her for a decade. And he goes, and, I, and there's another girl you're going to meet there that you're going to love. And you guys are going to be best friends. I was like, okay, Stace, I trust it. you. I, I trust him. He knows his women. <laughs> he does. He really knows his girls. And so we all met at the shoot. We had a great day all working together. Then we go to the hotel and room together. And it is just girl talk fest 2021. Like <laughs> we just it went straight to the heart God. instantly. It did. And it felt so good because <laughs> after being in an apartment for a year by, by myself mm -hmm. and working in this industry that is very male energy heavy, I was needing girl time more yeah. than I even knew. And being able to have all these heart to hearts was like, oh, it was so needed. I felt like I had a week long vacation just one night in PA. Honestly, same. Yeah. And, and of course, you know, guys will assume, you know, a bunch of nude models stay in a hotel room together. What's that like? <laughs> Hella scissoring. Am I right? <laughs> right, right. They're like, <laughs> so scissoring, you mean the scissors I grabbed to open our snack bags? Then yes. <laughs> oh my God. We Hella gummy so bears. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> after, That's on the money. <laughs> right. After unpacking a million snacks for all of us to share, because we all just had the forethought to do that, we all took and showers. Wait. Yes, and wings, and we got wings. And like, <laughs> we ate like models, we got wings. And we showered all our makeup and shit off for the day, and we sat down, and it was just like instant heart to heart time. Mm -hmm. And I thought Elizabeth was absolutely fascinating. And I was like, oh my God, she has to be on the podcast. <laughs> so she's telling us about the way she grew up. And, um, and in my mind, I'm just like, you, you hadn't labeled exactly what it was yet. And I'm just like, did she grow up in a cult? I'm yeah. so confused. Yeah, yeah. So, t so time. So, so, so let, well, let, <laughs> let me right, add to that's what I called it. <laughs> yeah, let, let, yeah. Let me add to the thing. Leanne calls me and she goes, uh, she goes, I met somebody great, and she uh, maybe grew up in a cult. Let's, uh, we're gonna figure it out. And she just sends me your Instagram, and I was like, uh, yes, what? <laughs> I'm like, there's so many questions. This is such a great story. So, so I always, I, I lovingly call it cult light or diet cult because, like, okay. not like full strength cult. Right. But uh, cult like enough that I grew up without TV. So what on a is the thing? What's the label? In Wisconsin. Every, everyone, yeah, everyone is everyone is is at the edge of their ears right now. What is the thing? What's the label? So it's hard to have one label because we started in Mennonite, which is a recognizable one. People know Mennonite, right? But then we switched to this like completely just like non-denominational, like meeting in people's houses to have churches. Oh. Um, kind of like still plain people, conservative but not attached to one greater denomination. Yeah. So it was like its own thing. 
which okay. I will say, okay, the craziest place that we had church in. So there was church in people's houses. There was church in a bank basement. They had like a space they would rent out on Sundays. Sure. But then here's the best one. We once rented out an old funeral home and we had church in a funeral home. It's a holy oh, place. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, I, nobody, nobody probably knows anything. I don't imagine that there's like a whole group of Mennonites listening. Um, I just, because I'm weird, I just, I yelled to my Amazon Alexa and I asked her what Mennonites were. And this is what she told me. She goes, it is a, uh, it is a sect of Presbyterianism where they believe in uh, baptism, late baptism. Oh, not, not, not baptizing chi- children, only adults. Uh, you cannot commingle with non, uh, non Mennonites and you wear simple clothing and you can only marry a Mennonite. How much of that is anything and how little of that is, is something? <laughs> that sounds pretty on the money. I will say, as a child, I wasn't really paying attention to like if it was a, a side section of a Presbyterian or who I could marry. But I wore ankle length skirts, um, which really irked me because I have seven siblings. I have four brothers that I would do everything with, like running around, climbing trees, and they'd be there in their freedom in their pants, and I'd be in my skirt to my ankles, right. trying to keep up with them. So that was frustrating, to be sure. But yeah, that's pretty on the money. I like that what you call the them. Rest f- of the, what is the rest of the garb? What is the rest of the, it's, so the skirt was down to the ankles and what's the rest of it? So it's usually a full length dress oh, okay. um, with like different like colored, usually floral prints, high necklines, sometimes puffy sleeves. Which I guess this is a little reminiscent of that. I'm looking down now. I'm like, I'm wearing floral puffy I'm sleeves. I'm back in it. <laughs> no, <laughs> Twilight Zone. <laughs> Wait, I like that you called them. I like that you called pants freedom. I like the idea of freedom pants. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. I don't know where that. Freedom pants. I don't know how that helps somebody or where that gives them their freedom. But okay, <laughs> so okay, so that actually that was so. Uh, this, okay, so, well, I want to get to the other thing, but this is a thing. One that more I, thing about the garb, though. Please. Yeah. So you've seen like women with head coverings on, yeah. right? Like a little piece of cloth over their hair. Their hair usually in a bun, maybe just yeah. a little bit peeking out the top. Yeah. So if for Mennonites, if a woman was wearing that, that was a sign that she had reached adulthood and had made a decision to continue on in life as a Mennonite and as okay. a Christian, like had chosen to be baptized. So, so it was you, like the symbol of adulthood. They don't mm-hmm. decide for you. You decide technically. Theoretically. Right. But I mean, that's the same with Amish. Like technically you decide, but if you leave, you'll be disowned. It's a problem <laughs> if you leave. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Wow. So this is my question. Cause you said it's, it's a, it's a thing I was going to ask. And it's a thing that you said, at which point in your life do you, you kind of like recognize it? Like maybe not everybody else is doing this. Oh, very early on. Really? Um, my family moved around a lot. So I think when we moved from Pennsylvania, to Wisconsin was when it really became real um, because like just going to the grocery store you get stared at like you're a zoo animal when there's a group of like seven children following a woman around all wearing plain clothes right. and so it became very apparent to me and I think that was when I had started this like obsession with wanting to be normal or wanting to be like a typical person and have experiences that what I thought everyone else was having yeah so the seven children thing is that is that as much a part of the religion culty thing or is that just you think your parents choice so the reason what's funny is neither of my parents grew up in um like really intense religion in that way like neither of them grew up mennonite they both grew up in you know typical american homes my mom only has one sister um my dad's from a slightly larger family but they decided to join the mennonite church specifically because of the family values because they wanted to have a strong family and they wanted to have a large family. And so that's what pulled them into that church. Wow. Hmm. Yeah. So yeah, when they went, choice. so the Mennonite thing is, is very regional. Is that right? So it's in Pennsylvania. So was there no such thing as a Mennonite in Wisconsin? No. So there, there are a lot of different side sects of Mennonite churches, but they're really all over um, and internationally too, because they believe in, you know, like going out and spreading the gospel. So, so there were sex in Wisconsin, but we moved to Wisconsin partially because our main church in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, was sending out a group to go start a church in Wisconsin. You were missionaries. Sort of, kind of, but also like my mom's family lived there. So like we wanted right. to be close to my grandparents before they died. <laughs> okay. So it was like a couple reasons. Yeah. <laughs> so what was the name of the We Meet in Bank Bank Basements church, I guess? <laughs> I don't think it had a name. Like there wasn't a sign. Yeah. It was a bunch of families that had, most of them had left 
the same Mennonite church because they had some disagreements with the way that it was run and with the pastors that ran it. And so there was like this subset of like maybe like five or six families that were like, we're going to start our own church. And my dad was one of those. Um, okay, and so your my father's parents, the pastor of a new church now. One of the pastors. It was like a take a turn and preach kind of thing. Like, oh, draw a number from the hat. This month, you speak on the third Sunday. Really? <laughs> it's like it's like Rotary, but it's church. Yeah, yeah. Although my dad does have a Bachelor of Biblical Studies. My parents actually met in Bible college. I but see. it was not a Mennonite Bible college. It was just like a, well, so this Bible college that they met in is one that um, has been decried. Like if you Google it, it comes up like, is this a cult? Really? Oh, wow. Yes. So, so a, the Bible speaks in Massachusetts. Wow. Okay. So there's a lot of, this is a thing that I learned from somebody. Um, I don't know if I should say his name. I won't say his name for this, for this thing. Uh, his mm -hmm. dad was part of a church that, uh, that had a school attached to it. And then eventually uh, there, it was just such a specific moment in, in religion or whatever that uh, the state that he was living in decided at some point that, that his school wasn't a school. They were, they're not doing anything. They're not, they're not like mm -hmm. asking, they're not trying to meet any of the standards. It's just not a school, but the church was like, it's fine. That's where our kids go to school. Um, so it's, <laughs> sounds on some level that that's kind of what's like there's no like regulatory thing that your your family is like involved in right like i'm trying to I'm so trying not to yeah so there wasn't in wisconsin in wisconsin in order to homeschool your kids which i was homeschooled as well obviously like on top of all that what yeah. a shock right. <laughs> but in order to homeschool your kids in wisconsin all you have to do is submit a paper saying i'm gonna homeschool my kids this year and that's it and that's it <laughs> wow so, yeah. okay, what is your role as, I mean, okay, what number sibling were you? So that, there isn't even an easy are answer you? for that because I'm the fourth <laughs> biologically, but I have two sisters that are adopted from Russia. So I was the fourth sibling until I was 10 years old, and then I was the fifth sibling. Because um, oh my, my adopted okay. sisters are biologically 10 years apart. So Got one's you. older and one's younger. So now as a girl in this family, do you have like, does each sibling sort of have like a role? Like, is there something that you are required to do? That's a great question. Do you mean like chores wise or like? Yeah, like are you required to do society? certain chores? And if you're the oldest, you are supposed to be a, uh, I mean, in most, in any American family, you are like the role model, I guess, if you're the firstborn. But with all of you, I mean, with this heavy religious burden, <laughs> is there like things that you have to check off a list at, at, at each age or weekly? or annually I say so like this maybe in some families but like my mom's a classically trained violinist and violist so she's not like an organized person wait so it was more <laughs> just like chaos wait that <laughs> sounds like an organized person that sounds like a, like a like she's like a virtuoso you're like she's just all over the place she just did mozart <laughs> at four what that sounds so I, musicians my, aren't exactly known for being organized though maybe yeah here's my here's my hone in on 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 leanne's question um was the function of having so many children to like run a farm, run a business, like be a family thing that was doing something that you couldn't do? Like, why do you need to have this many kids that you're just like grabbing people from Russia? Maybe that's the question. <laughs> well, so the reason that we adopted from Russia was that there was a seven or yeah, a seventh biological kid that was born and then passed away a day after he was born. And so after he died, my parents felt like there was a hole in the family. Okay. Um, but it was kind of risky to have another pregnancy. Like my mom had already had a few miscarriages. Right. So they were like, oh, well, you know what? There are these children on the other side of the world that don't have a family. So might as well do that rather than trying to give birth to another. And, and my dad also loved Russia because my, my mom played in a gospel band and my dad was the sound guy like before they started dating and they had toured in Russia. Nice. Okay. <laughs> so are There's you something romantic about that? Yeah. Or it's creepy. Kind of cute. Or creepy. We don't know yet. Uh, <laughs> I just I just assume all dudes are, when they say Russian, they're just Googling it. Um, no. What was I going to ask you? So where were you? How well, so we'll get off of this in a sec. But how old were you then when when they adopted your two non-biological sisters? I was 10 years old and I actually got to go with on the second trip to Russia and okay. then accidentally spent a night in the orphanage. Oh, which was interesting. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Shit. Did you just get we like forgotten? Like were you left behind by we need accident? Like 12 episodes no, 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 no. for you. <laughs> <laughs> I know. This is barely scratches the surface. <laughs> it's been an eventful almost 25 years. <laughs> 
But uh, no, we missed the last train. So we were at the side of Russia we were on was like far Siberia, like Vladivostok, which is on the Japanese Sea. Okay. And um, we had like misread the train schedule. And so we went to the little town where my sister's orphanage was, Novoshetinsky, which was like a tiny coal mining town that didn't have any hotels or motels. So we couldn't stay there. So we were staying in a place that was like an hour's train ride away. So your whole family And stayed. we had gone for the day to visit. No. So it was myself, my older sister, and my two parents that went on this trip. Yeah. But everybody, because everybody, like, let's be real flights to all the way to Russia <laughs> for that many yeah. people. Yeah. Way too expensive. Yeah. 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 So, um, we'll just, wow. so let's jump all the way into now. When did you know you were <laughs> sexy? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Great question. How like, did you figure really it out? Knew. So I think it was like a bits and pieces thing. I always was fascinated by sex and by anything related to sex. Yeah. Even vaguely. Like I remember at 12, I found this book in the church library that like talked about masturbation because it was essentially like telling teens don't do this, but it told you how to do it. And I was like, Ooh, I'm going to do that. Oh, that's and so I was smart. Like, Six years straight every day. Let's do that. Here's what you don't wow, do. So wait, the first time you <laughs> masturbated, you were 12. I think at like 11 or 12. Yeah. And I, oh, and I like that you were like an academic about it. You're like, what is, who's the leading <laughs> researcher on Going, she, she would have to be, no, like she would have to study. The rest of us had a legal cable. And by like, I mean, I got into exactly. porn collections by the time I was eight, which is I, crazy, but. No, I, I, was, I was a gifted, like I was a virtuoso, like her mother. I just started humping my hands with no information. <laughs> I had this pillow. You remember those like microfiber pillows with the tiny bees that like felt silky soft? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. That's what I humped. Yeah. <laughs> we got real close. Yeah. Okay, so you're sexy. You know you're sexy. You know you're into sex. All these things. You're in this... Um, world where there's probably a lot of repression. When I will say, I don't think I really knew I was sexy until I started dating men because I was exclusively with a woman for four years from 17 to 21. And, she and like sexy. Um, it's not, well, it was a complicated relationship to be sure, but I like, I was very kind of shy about how I went about things. Like I dressed mostly in like sweaters and jeans because she was uncomfortable with me. She was very controlling. We'll put it that way. It was not a healthy relationship by any means. Neither you of you were right. open about what you were doing? <laughs> oh, well, I I kind of like, I, I moved out from my parents at 18 because I was in that relationship and it wasn't something that would fly underneath of their roof. Mm -hmm. But you're but you're like walking around open in and she, but she doesn't want people looking at you. Yeah, like walking around like openly with a woman, but um, she was really insecure. And so that's why I didn't pursue modeling during that time until afterwards. Um, and like, she would get upset if I walked outside looking too cute. So mm -hmm. the, can the lady speak for a second? Cause I can't speak to this, this, this <laughs> notion. What is it like to, to become a woman to the world, to men? And what is that first interaction of like, Oh shit, like men are noticing me and like, <laughs> Is it good? Is it bad? Is it gross? Is it exciting? Like what both of you, what is that experience like? I thought it was exciting. Yeah. It didn't really happen for me. I felt until I got my implants when I was maybe 21 or 22. Really? Cause before that, yeah, I grew up in dance and a lot of ballet and I had stocked my growth. I had pecs like a boy, yeah. like my growth, the, the breast tissue was not going to grow cause I had too much muscle. Right. And so wow. when I so I had the body and I was very skinny when I got my implants, I was only like 95 pounds. I was very skinny. I was already go go dancing because I was a great dancer. So I got hired. But I was wearing these pasties on a flat chest. I was wearing these rhinestone thongs and this big headpiece that was bigger than my whole body. And I did not feel sexy at all. I just felt like I knew how to dance and I enjoyed dancing. Yeah. When I got implants, my body went from like that of a teenage boy to a more feminine ba body, adult body. <laughs> and then I got attention and then my butt popped and it was just like, oh, this is exciting. People are just like throwing themselves at me. How fun. Yeah. That didn't happen until my early 20s. So to me, it was exciting. I I think I kind of experienced that when I was like 13 or 14 because when I was like 12, I think I already had a B cup and then I was 13. I think I hit a C cup. It's just and boobs. That's, that's all dudes care about. 
That's when it normally And even though, like, I was still in my, like, knee-length skirts, I would try and wear the tightest tops that I could. And so we'd go to our our house church, and in the basement after church, all of the teens would, like, hang out and play dodgeball or cards or whatever after church. And the teen boys would start flirting with me, and it was a good feeling. I I was like, ooh, I like this new power. Let me see what I can do with it, right? (laughs) I want boobs now. But I think that... (laughs) <laughs> the craziest experience I've had with like feeling that power was a time I had gone down to North Carolina to dance down there for a couple of weeks. And I had gone to audition at a club. I had called ahead of time and they were like, we're not hiring anyone. And I was like, mm, I'm going to change their mind. So I <laughs> put on like a sexy that. outfit. Yeah. 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 I was like, no, this is the, this is the best club in the city. You I'm going to work here. Like, yeah. yeah, no other place is an option. This is the best one. I'm going there. So <laughs> I put on a sexy outfit. I did my makeup. I went in. I stood in line and I went on a Friday night when there was already a line of men. So when I went in, all of the men in line had to look at me standing in front of them. Right. So by the time I finally get up there, I'm like, hey, can I see the hiring manager? They bring him out. But while I'm waiting for him, like all of these men walking past are seeing me the whole time. So when the hiring manager comes out, I'm like, hey, I was wondering if you're hiring, whatever. He starts talking to me about it and he's like, yeah, you know, we are hiring. And then while he's talking to me, this guy who's waiting in line comes over and is like, Eric, you got to hire this girl. Like, I'll come back and see her tonight. Yeah. And I was like, that's how you do it. And then afterwards to celebrate because I got the job, I went to this sports bar just like to get a bite to eat before I went back to my Airbnb. But I was still in my cute outfit. And when I walked in, every single person sitting at the bar was a man. And every single one of them turned and (laughs) stared at me, ended up buying my dinner like yeah. three drinks, asking yes. me to play pool. I was like, right. this is insane. Perfect <laughs> that transition. Is power. That is power. What's, what's the oh, difference so between power. that? What's the difference between that and becoming a sugar baby? What's like, what's the, the threshold? Um, well, like being a sugar baby is much more about an intense personal interaction, right? So it's sure. like creating this illusion of a relationship in all of the ways, like thinking of personalized gifts for the other person, kind things to say to them. It's like figuring out what their ideal woman is and then it's, like reflecting them back. It's GFE. It's girlfriend experience. A hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. But like to the full extent, like I've met families. Right. What? So what do you call? We're in, we're in a transition point where there's people in 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 the in the sex work industry in the in a lot of spaces on the OnlyFans trying to redefine themselves and uh, maybe one of the things they do is they just um, they can't make rent like this month so they just uh, go on a campaign or they have an Amazon wish list and maybe they're nobody sugar baby but they're looking for these personalized interactions where they get paid to uh, maybe exchange a nude or um, do a thing or maybe humiliate some. Somebody. What does that space look like? And then where, at which point are you just selling feet pics versus you're a sugar baby versus financial domination? Maybe. I don't know. I, I mean, think it's, it's the thing a lot of us have questions about. The umbrella of all of it is sex work. I think that's yeah, true. It's a great broad term. The umbrella of all of it is sex work. Yeah, and I think that's true. People just have to understand that sex work does not necessarily mean that you are actually having sex for money, but it could mean that. Yeah. What is what does ethical pornography mean to you two? <sighs> I don't know if that's don't something know. I've really thought about, but definitely to consulting a uh, consenting adults, that's like a baseline to be yeah. sure. Exchanging, exchange, uh, agreeing upon a price, a a product, right, mm-hmm. and exchanging that. Um, in a non-deceptive way where both parties get what they wanted, right? Right. Yeah, and discussing everything beforehand, like open communication. Yeah. No kind of coer- coercion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And not sending somebody else's nudes. <laughs> That's yeah. a big one. <laughs> yeah. That's important. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I guess, so your main, what was your, your, your main, uh, your first, you said professional nude model, which I like that you put professional in there. Um, <laughs> What's the, <laughs> what's the marker? Yeah, when are, I, as a professional comedian, somebody gives me twenty bucks. I'm a professional comedian, baby. Let's do this. <laughs> what's it? If I if I sell my dick to somebody in my Instagram tonight, am I a professional nude model, or what does it take to be a professional? Nude <laughs> no, nude you're just a guy selling your dick. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> well, Leanne, please uh, give me okay. your insight on this as well. A but professional I would... nude. So now we have not just now. Because of social media, we have an ab- abundance of people who wake up, decide they're hot, and decide that they're a model. Sure. Someone takes their pictures, they put it online. 
I'm a model today. Sure. You know, now you're going to book this person for professional gigs. They don't show up. They suck. They're late. They bring their significant other with them. Like it's bring your boyfriend to work day. They don't have the right attire. They don't know. They're Mm -hmm. awkward. They don't know the language. They don't know the. They don't know the lighting, the angles, the lighting, everything. (laughs) They don't have a contract of any kind. They don't know. So that is like, no, you're just a hot person on social media. You're not actually a model. Mm Mm-hmm. We are professionals in this. Well, but so then how do you know that you've reached that status or who decided that you're there, I guess? I decided I was there when when people were calling me to book me. Like I stopped looking for work and people were just booking. The work was just there. And And I was like, oh, shit. And you were like, this is my rate. Take it or leave it. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I just went full time in January. So it's only been like three months full time for me. Nice. Um. Sorry for another day, but I was stuck overseas on a yacht in Singapore for four months because of COVID. Sounds horrible. Yeah, I barely survived. (laughs) Um, But yeah, going full time was a big step and it's been really exciting. And like Leanne said, like the work is just there. Like I'm getting messages in my DM almost every day with people looking to book. And um, like I went out to St. Louis last weekend because a photographer messaged me and was like, hey, I'll fly you out. You want to shoot for two days, make a couple grand. I was like, yeah, I'll do that. (laughs) Yeah. Call if me you're naive. only depending on OnlyFans, what? Go ahead. No, no, go no. Finish what you're saying. Oh, if you're only depending on OnlyFans, you are not a professional model. Because if OnlyFans shuts down tomorrow, you have no work. Fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, F you, Bella. It, your Thorne. job is just gone overnight. Um. <laughs> well. Uh, call me night. Na- oh, do you have something? Do you have a positive notion on that? You gave me a well on Bella Thorne. Oh, my well was just that, like, well, Bella Thorne, I have my, I have plenty of other thoughts about that. So, so let me, okay, so let me, do, let me, let me start there then. So this is the thing I've been trying to say to people that don't understand the OnlyFans thing. And this is me and, this is me and Leanne's, and maybe, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, understanding of the thing. At some point, OnlyFans was a marker for, I know what I'm getting. We're not writing it down on the page, but we know what we're getting. Like, just like you know when you go to Dunkin' Donuts, you're going to buy coffee. Just like you know when you were opening Playboy, if somebody was on the cover of Playboy, they were going to be naked in Playboy. Um, I think the understanding uh, felt like if you have an OnlyFans page, I'm going to see your pussy. Um, And Bella Thorne didn't show us her pussy, and we're all mad. Is that fair? (laughs) Is that what OnlyFans was? And then my follow up. No, first, let's answer this. <laughs> well, not all OnlyFans are you going to see a pussy. So how do I know what I'm double. getting? How do I know what I'm getting as an OnlyFans subscriber? Is is there a place? How do I know? How do I know what you're going to show me? People will put it in their bio. The do they? Night. Like, yeah, you okay. put in your bio what it is that you offer. But the reason people are mad at Bella Thorne is because you can send um, like a pay to view message, yeah. like a picture with a price tag on it and people can only see it once they've paid the pipes right. and you put a description. So she put on her description that it was going to be a nude picture and then people would pay for it. And it wasn't. She fully yeah, lied. Yeah, exactly. She fully yeah, so lied. She just fucked it for everyone. Yeah. So, yeah. so nobody has any trust in the platform. People who have never been to the platform now don't think that anything is real. They can't trust the thing. Um, it almost bankrupted OnlyFans because it takes a lot of money and give a lot of money back. Um, mm-hmm. Don't, don't do that. Um, number two, <laughs> Um, and I didn't don't know this. lie. What yeah. a novel concept. Right. But back to what you said, you were agreeing on a thing, a price for a thing and everybody's in agreement. And then we're, we're fine. Uh, send me your nudes, not somebody else's. Leanne said, uh, Leanne, Leanne sent me the craziest text one time where, um, Which one? <laughs> we had had, we had had, um, before, uh, I had somebody on this podcast when it was called something else and somebody that we both ended up knowing together. And you were like, you were like distraught that she, and this is your phrase, or maybe it's not your phrase, but you were like, you were like annoyed that she was like, uh, she wasn't going to show pink. So if you're a nude model, um, I'm annoyed with any model, um, that I'm working with that isn't going to give me, like if we're shooting OnlyFans, if we're shooting erotic yeah. or we're shooting whatever, it, it has to be that. How do I, to, how do I know as a nude model <laughs> that I have to show my pussy? I, don't I mean, you would clarify it with the photographer yeah. before you even book it. You don't do it when you're at the shoot. Yeah. You do it before so, you even book the shoot. Yeah. Well, and I also, I have two different rates for those two different types of nude, right? There's artistic nude, which is where like, sometimes it's going to be like, there's a leg crossed or there's like a gauze no sheet or whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. And then there's open leg nude or playboy nude, which is like, you're going to see it. And right. all, And full communication on all those. 
Right. Yeah. And if, and also if I'm shooting for trade with another model so that we have the content, we have to provide content that I can sell, that yeah. she can sell. And the ones that sell show pink, yeah. you know? So is that, is that a fair term? upon this, we actually have to execute this. <laughs> Elizabeth, is that a fair term, show pink? Yeah, although for some people it's brown, so like pink or brown. Yeah, whatever. Well, it's still... No, I'm just I'm kidding. Gonna... Ranges but, of tan. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Showing something is essential for sure yeah. if you've agreed to that and if that's for that kind of paid content. But yeah. like communication takes care of everything. Like discuss things beforehand and you won't run into problems that you didn't expect. I agree right. with all of that. Right. Um, okay, how do we transition back to... so? Well, I have a bunch of incredible, <laughs> Eric, the producer, he has so many good questions and I don't even know how to jump into all of them, but I well, just, I want to get to them because they're good. Well, so there's one that I love, but let me, let me, let me, let me, how do we, how far away from be, from Mennonite life are you and the rest of your family? Okay. So I'm like as far away as is possible to be. Make, makes sense. Um, my <laughs> family has like loosened over time, especially like in like the last like six or seven years since I haven't lived there anymore. They're much more um, secular, I guess is the term. Yeah. Okay. So like they have, they don't have TV, but they have streaming now. And you know, everyone in my family wears pants. My sisters wear pants. Oh, nice. It's not a big deal anymore. It's much more relaxed. Yeah. Freedom and pants. especially, so this is what's really crazy is I had like hit a lot of my life from my family for a while after the negative reaction when I was dating a woman. So yeah. then when I started sex work, you know, stripping, modeling, whatever, I was like, obviously, I'm not going to tell my family. Right. Um, other than I have two brothers that I'm very close with that I was that I shared that with pretty much from the start. And then finally, just like six months ago, I told my dad. Wow. And it went a million times better than I ever dreamed that it would. What did you think was going to happen? Uh, well, I was terrified, but I wouldn't have gone to him if I hadn't seen the changes that he'd made. Like he kind of went through a midlife crisis and like really became much more open-minded um, than he was previously. Are they still so together? I was like, he seems like he, he could, yes. Yeah. My parents have been together for 35 years. Love that. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. I answered. So I went to him. Oh, yeah. sorry. No, no, go. Sorry. Yeah. And then it went incredibly well. I was terrified. I thought that he was either going to be like terrified for my safety or um, like judgmental or any of the above, honestly, or worried about me. I didn't want him to be worried about me. Oh, okay. So then when I went to him and I told him like a hundred percent the truth going back several years and he ended the conversation by telling me that he was proud of me and he loved me. Uh -huh. And I was like, Oh my God, this is all I needed. Like yeah, I feel so that's, validated right now. That's when everything you want to hear. Totally. A hundred percent. This was in like, I think October. Wow. It's right now. Um, yeah. Yeah. So pretty recently. Do you think this is a thing that I mostly believe in, and I've and I've gotten some confirmation of this? Do you think? I mean, it's who you are, right? It's a part of it's a part of how you lived your life. Do you think that he had some internal understanding that this is the type of person that you already were? Maybe. I think so. I mean, I've been very much like a I'm going to forge my own path person my entire life, and I've always been um, someone that bucks rules and standards and expectations. Um, and I mean, I remember as a teen, they must have had a hell of a time trying to get me to dress conservatively right. <laughs> because I did not go easily by any means. I used to fake being sick so I didn't have to go to church. Like, right. mm -hmm. you were um, the rebel. Oh, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And that sexuality has always been an innate part of me. It's always been like this raw energy that I have. And I'm so grateful to finally have an outlet for it. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. I hear so you. The only the only other pending thing before we, we tackle everything after is what's that moment? You keep referencing the moment you left like the the church, the Mennonite, the whole thing to go be a, with a woman. What's that? What's that moment? How does that how does that take place? And how do you just like launch the whole thing and then and then just boogie to be in a relationship and leave everybody? <laughs> well, I'd been kind of like pulling back in my own ways for a little while. When I got my driver's license, when I was 16, I was 16. like, I have some freedom. Yeah. So when I was 16, I got my driver's license. I started doing Lindy hop and swing dancing and blues dancing Cute. as like a partnered social dance. Yeah. Which like is it. where I met my soon to be girlfriend. 
And we started dating when I was 17. At the time, I was taking community college classes, and I was like, I had some professors that were, you know, were very liberal. I had one professor specifically who was a lesbian that like really empowered me and encouraged me to kind of live my truth. Yeah. And you really so are, I started. You really are a sexual academic. I love this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've got the BS. What can I say? Yeah. <laughs> Um, and so I started dating my girlfriend and I didn't tell my parents until after I turned 18 because I was afraid that I would get kicked out and I didn't want to get kicked out before I was like actually an adult. Right. Um, you so can't I kick told me out. I'm first. already gone. Right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I told my dad first and he was like, eh, it's just a phase. Like you'll get over it kind of. Okay. And I was like, that's, that's of course soft, I was like, it's not a phase, typical, dad. but that's parent. a soft reaction though. That could have been way worse. Yeah. So my dad has always been the one that I've had a closer relationship with. Like I've always loved my dad so much and respected him and looked up to him. Um, so my mom was always <laughs> more tough. Well, she also believes that anyone in sex work has been trafficked and it can't possibly be in, a, in it of their own accord. Right. This is um, the hardest thing. This is the hardest thing yeah, I'm finding. Yeah. Uh, entering this 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 discussion space is some people are so far back to like people are being trafficked and like everybody mm -hmm. is, is doing you cannot against possibly their will. like sex this much right <laughs> right and, and and right and everything is coercive and everything is abusive and it's like and I and I and it's like and I, I'm it's like I can't figure out how to get them to where we're yeah. at. right they think like, I don't know how to portray. like sex you're a woman how could you want to have sex <laughs> This is crazy. But if my sex life isn't enjoyable, how could yours be? <laughs> right, oh, right. interesting. Yeah, maybe. Although yeah. I will say the most free and empowered I have ever felt in my life is coming down the stairs at the strip club, ready to be fully nude in front of strangers. Like it is so incredibly empowering. And I felt so free to express myself in ways that I had held back my entire life. I love mm -hmm. that. Can I? I don't think that a lot of men realize that the nude models, the strippers, the women in porn, the submissives in fetish are the ones in charge. Right, mm -hmm. right. We're the right. ones in charge. Right. I can yeah. command and I've done workshops where I was the only model and there was 20 photographers shooting me at a time and they're getting in each other's way. And I'm like, listen, I'm starting here. <laughs> I'm looking at you. I'm going this way. If I miss you, I promise I'll come back. You'll all get the same look. And they all shut up like like mm -hmm. children. And they're just like, okay. And they just wait. Because if I'm not in charge in these scenarios, then that's not consent. Right. You yeah. know, if you're the submissive right. and you're not in charge, that's rape. So you are yep. in charge in these positions. Yeah. And people don't realize how powerful that is. Let me ask the two of you, what are moments? Well, so um, Elizabeth, as a as a are, are we saying stripper or we're we saying dancer? What are we? Uh, I'm fine with stripper because I call it what it is. So when you although I'm currently no longer dancing, so I'm an ex stripper, I guess. So we can't go find you live on that's unfortunate for all of us. But um, <laughs> you gotta is, subscribe to my OnlyFans. Fine. Smart. And we'll plug that. <laughs> and pay for your porn and we'll plug that. Um is but is there a moment as walking down that staircase, that empowered moment, is there a moment where you're where you where you're supposed to be in that space and, and you and you find yourself in the exact opposite? Wow. You walk into a room. It's not a thing that you have control over. There's some sense of danger. There's some. There's there's a complete lack of power when you're about to do the thing that's supposed to be the most empowering. Have you experienced that? What does that look like? The description that you're giving, the only experiences that I think of when you say that, like coming into a room and feeling like totally out of your element and out of power is what I experienced as a teen going into church. Oh, sure. Like I went to my mm -hmm. sister's Easter play because I love my sister <laughs> a couple weeks ago, which yeah, it was socially distanced, but anyhow. Um, and just walking into that building where I had had, where I'd gone to church as a teenager, like I started having a mini panic attack and I had to like talk, talk myself down just being in the space i remembered like all of the mean comments and the judgment and it was not a good experience for me yeah yeah interesting well well glad well glad is that yeah Dan frozen oh, dan is frozen it's funny because when but, I'm like i've never felt powerless in the dance world Okay. Dan, well, you're freezing. That's good to hear. Well, it's funny because when I'm froze, when you guys <laughs> oh, think no. I'm frozen, I think you're frozen. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, I hear you oh, now. Here you go. You're back. But yeah, just carry on. Carry, if I get frozen, carry on. 
Um, okay, okay. We, men are we, men are so invaluable. Just do let the women. <laughs> so we, we just went over that she felt she did not have power when she went into church, which is I did. He, I did hear that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So Go fast ahead. forward, uh, Leanne. What are the ones that you love that Eric's uh, putting on the shelf? Okay. Um, if you started a cult, what would it be? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, if I started a cult. <laughs> I think I'm like way too into consent to start a cult. <laughs> um, like I, I think, couldn't even really work in sales because I don't want to. I think that's a like, mic drop answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's a mic drop answer. I, I could, I could that's never it. start a cult. I believe in consent. Wait, I think so, I would have a nude cult. <laughs> that's what I was going to ask. So I did my. Well, like, I did, what would make it a cult? I mean, like it really would be. I don't. Somebody, I, it would just, like you must be nude here. End of story. But that's consent. <laughs> but that's right. still consenting because yeah. if someone doesn't want to be nude won't enter that space right. they could just leave <laughs> yeah. i would join a nudist colony that's what i was gonna ask that. yeah it's so fun has anybody my boyfriend laughs at me because i walk around at home naked all the time yeah. he's like why are you always naked i'm like it's a natural state to be in yeah. i leave keep nothing up high enough so i'm not cold yeah yeah, yeah okay. I, um yeah I li- so yeah i like I think I think there's no there's no um it's it's kind of in the same way where Leanne was teasing me because it sounded like I wanted to date two women and, and she didn't think we could find where I'm the unicorn and it's like or or like that's obviously like like a perfect scenario. I don't know that there's a per I don't think there's a scenario where there's nudists where any where most of the, the, the crew is attractive uh, to the to the extent <laughs> that we want it to be. So we have to try mm. to start an attractive nudist because I think the notion of nudist is um, all of my flaws are all of what make me a human. And so that, so it's like, so it's people that are like, like that have felt flawed and just go, I'm just whipping it all out now. So that's what I, that's what mm-hmm. it is. That's a weird nudist space. But I, but well, I nudity it. is also like, it's totally different in the U S than in other parts of the world. Explain. Like America has totally sexualized nudity and yes. it's not a sexually so sexual thing bad. innately. Yeah. 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 It's so weird. No, My when I, you go so to Asia or Europe, right no one now. cares. <laughs> It's just when, sitting. It's just sitting on that, like on the couch. It's nothing. It's it's. It's, it's not doing it's, anything. It's not, it's a it piece not, of your body. It has nothing when to do I'm with sex right naked now. Naked in my apartment. It's not because I'm like I want to be sexy. It's like because I don't want to wear yeah. a bra. It's yeah. because I don't exactly. want my vagina squished into a thong. It's because I just don't want. I just don't want to. I like the feeling of air on my skin. Yeah. Right. Like if I go on a long road trip in the summer, I'm gonna wear a bikini and have the windows all the way down, yeah. so I get that yeah, beautiful breeze. Feels good. Right, and it has great. nothing to do with sex. Yeah, no, normal- it's not sexual in the least. Yeah, no. normalize men wearing bikinis. That's what I think we should do. When you start. I'm, yeah, I'm you down. Started. I'm down. I, I already, the first photo shoot I did with Leanne, they just put me in a dress. And I was like, I don't know what we're doing, but I'm down. I don't it's care. It's totally comfortable in it. I don't care. I love that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, the uh, the one that the one that I thought was very interesting uh, that Eric was saying, and, and I'm and let, let's remove the fact that it would never happen. Um, what <laughs> what would happen, and remove the fact that you don't want this. What would happen if you tried to rejoin the the the, the those communities now? Well, I think that they probably wouldn't even know what I'd been doing with my life. Okay, so I would probably get some like weird stares and judgment and people would, would your um, family even take you back to this lifestyle well my family's not in that lifestyle anymore okay right right they left okay yeah so like so yeah you could join and just act like you don't have the yeah the or i could i could come in and be like oh my poor sinner soul like christ has saved me i can't wait to be back in the they fold. love that shit yeah they eat right. that up yeah <laughs> right <laughs> They love that shit. Um, Eric, Eric, the creepiest one Eric sent, and we love Eric, and he's and he's uh, he's not creepy. I love uh, a good creep- creepy question. But the creepiest <laughs> one he said, would you ever do Mennonite identity in sexy role play? I don't think that I would feel sexy doing it, so no. <laughs> I wouldn't what have a problem with someone else doing it, but I think I would have too many like mental blocks and like yeah mental connections to be able to do space. it. Yeah, yeah. Also, so, like, I was a child at that time, so it would just, like, it would be weird on so many levels. Right. That's fair. <laughs> so even if your partner was like, I dig that, you're like, too soon, too soon. Yeah, probably. Okay. Be like, that's, anything but that. That's fair. <laughs> um, so are there parts of... I would like to have sex in a church, though. For yeah, sure. Down. Wait, uh, current, like, like, like it, like it, uh, it could have been a church in the past, or it has to still be a church now? 
either but like i'd prefer if it was still a church now I like or like the best possible scenario is like in like a back room or like in the bathroom during a service wow mass is happening that would be I like that. that'd be that. that'd be it it would be like therapeutic <laughs> for you i think oh yeah. that'd be great well i was so then i was gonna <laughs> ask so, that, so then maybe this cancels out this question um are the were there parts of of the evangelicalism of this Presbyterian thing, uh, this Christianity thing? There were were there parts of it that you subscribed to while you were unaware of the fact that maybe the rest of the world doesn't live this way, or are there things that you kept from that life, from in a belief system sense, um, at all? Yeah. Well, like as a child growing up, everything that you're surrounded with is your version of reality, right? Correct. So if you grow up somewhere where religion and Christianity and God are at the center of everything, you think that that is the center of everything. And so like I was baptized when I was 10 because mostly it was because I, my parents always told us that the most important thing to them was that their children had a good relationship with God, like above academics, above anything else. And so obviously as a kid, you want to make your parents proud. So mm -hmm. I was like, I can do this. I can believe in this God stuff. Like I'm not feeling what everyone around me is feeling, but I'm going to try and convince myself that I am. But I think when I was about like 11 or 12, I started questioning the existence of God. Yeah. And so, the, the, like there was no going back from there. What, what were the, th I remember my moment of like, wait a second, in Catholicism, what mm. was your moment? What was like, what was the thing too far that you're like, no, sorry, no. It was when I realized that what we think of as the Bible were selections that were chosen by a group of men. A group of men like gathered and had a conference and were like, hmm, what are we gonna choose to have everyone live their lives by and say is the word of God inspired by, or the, the inspired word of God written by man? Like yeah. they chose between a bunch of different books and there maybe even people were bribed to put in a certain book because sure. the author was like maybe still alive or their descendants or something. Like that was the big eye opener moment for me. And like, it just continued from there. You recognize that you recognized male dominance at, a, at 11. <laughs> oh, I recognized it way before then. I, uh, I my family that. would laugh at me because I was like the most little feminist in this yeah. Mennonite Aww. world in my long dress. I'd be like, why do I have to cook? <laughs> yeah, I like that. She all, I mean, you know, Liz also grew up a little bit in a different time than we did. She, you're 25? Oh, for sure, yeah, yeah. Well, you're I'm 25, 25, but also I grew up, I'm about to be 25 next month, May 13th. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> yeah, so there was more feminist movement when she was younger than there was when I was, there was no feminist movement when I was younger. Yeah. However, yeah. I was like completely separate from that general yeah, so feminist she was movement. Actually, she was actually in a, in a more closed off environment. I mean, you grew up in Yonkers. Right. She was in a more closed off environment Right. Than any of it. The land without time, like no TV, yeah. everything that I picked up about like my idea of the outside world was either from like going to the grocery sure, store sure, sure. or yeah. the library or right. from reading i right. consumed books yeah. like it was my job right that's awesome that's again as you yeah that's and i'm 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 putting this on you you are you are a uh you are a sex positive academic um in this because you like you are the abe lincoln of learning about sex <laughs> education like you just did it all in books you know and then in college i, I really like that about you um, um are you, your siblings you. are your siblings uh all liberated now um uh, frozen. Our connection Hi, is deeply religious. Oh, you guys are frozen. Am I cool. here? I think well, there's, okay. a, there's a bump. I think we're all back now. Yeah. Okay. Um, so some of my siblings still identify as deeply religious. Okay. But then like I have a younger brother who's has a lot of similar perspective and viewpoints to me. So it's great because we can confide in each other and, you know, have little conversations. That's awesome. Would and the you... two that are adopted, are they in or out? Uh, my older sister, I think, is probably out. Uh, she doesn't live in the state anymore. You know, she's married. She has a kid. Like, she's totally doing her own thing. But then my younger sister still lives with my family. So she's still kind of in it. And those were the two that were adopted? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. okay. So yeah, what, yeah. what does your current lifestyle look like? You said Ooh. you have a boyfriend. Well, you said that you're a professional a nude model. Mm-hmm. I travel as much as I can in these COVID times. I kind of just moved into a new apartment, which is still in the works. There's some painting that's going to happen. Um, because I freelance as a professional nude model, I have a lot of flexibility in my schedule. I have a lot of free time and I love being able to make my own schedule. Mm -hmm. how, how do you and your great. boyfriend define your relationship? If that's not uh, over the line. Um, like 
to find how like i don't know like, uh, are you what guys are, okay. are what? you just to, are you monogamous are you open? Yes. Are you okay happy? we're in a serious monogamous relationship nice. which is wild because it's my first in three like like first serious relationship in three years so it's yeah. been interesting getting back into that and my first serious like really serious relationship with a man ever oh nice did you, did you find yeah what are you finding Let's just say weird so that it's not a judgment. What are you, what are you finding weird and new? Okay, so uh, something that I struggle with coming from my feminist perspective is that like dealing with gender roles and that like I want to help out around the house. Like I have this urge to take care of the people around me and like I worked as a nanny for years. So like I'm used to like bustling around and making, making sure everything's in the space all right and you know like doing someone's laundry but then my gender norms and my feminism are like oh don't do anything for him because then he's going to expect it and you're just going to be taking that role and that, like I never thought about that in a relationship with a woman and now with a man I'm like oh I don't want to like conform to taking right. care of him but I also want to take care of him yeah I'm like oh what do I do this is, this is what this is my this is my probably not this is my I'll just call it a radical idea about gender norms uh I just gender roles I just think Remove the gender thing. I think we just need to talk about roles. It's like I'm capable of doing like if there's 50 things and what was cool about gender roles. This is what I'll say. What was cool about gender roles was there was 50 things and we said it's 25, 25 and we arbitrarily said women do this and men do this. So remove that and just let's still say there's 50 things. We all, two of us have to do them. Which which 25 things do you want and which 25 things do I want? And it's not because I'm a dude and it's not because you're a woman. Let's just do the 50 mm -hmm. things as a team. Mm -hmm. I like that perspective. That and fair? I will say my boyfriend is a fantastic cook. So right. he definitely defies the gender roles there. And yeah. we also flip the script because I have short hair and he has long hair. <laughs> <laughs> that's so, so he, true does he use it he has like you? perfect golden manes oh no 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 i am growing my hair out to a bob right now though no i mean does he do um, the flip does he can he do the flip oh, be like excuse sometimes. me and do the flip and then and then win an argument that's what all i want he do won't now. do the excuse me and i will fake flip my hair <laughs> all i do time. it all the time i keep hurting myself <laughs> <laughs> you gotta work that neck out more <laughs> um so back okay so all the way back to because eventually at the end of this in a little while we're gonna have you promote all your stuff um what yes, the hell okay. is a sack of antlers Okay. All right. A sack of <laughs> That's your Instagram. It, IG. That is com my Instagram handle. Slash yep. sack That's my of Instagram antlers. handle. Model of um, model mayhem. I'm also sack of antlers on there. Um, but sack of antlers is a term that's used for a very skinny woman. And my background with the term was my ex, my old, my last relationship, which like was like pile of bones. Toxic. Yeah. 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 So it started from like a really negative place and that's why I turned it around. Oh. Um, so I was super thin when I was dating my ex because I was very anxious all the time and then I lost my appetite and I was just, I was super skinny. Didn't really have the tits I have now. Certainly didn't have an ass. And <laughs> you have a great um, ass, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. It's homegrown. <laughs> <laughs> and my ex would make fun of me for being so skinny and would like mockingly call me a sack of antlers because they were a like, you're all sharp ends. Like someone threw girl? antlers. That I one? think at that point I was like 19 or 20, but yes. Same girl. Yes. Yeah. Um, and so she would call me a sack of antlers because I was all sharp pointy ends. So then when we broke up and then I gained weight and then I started modeling, then I was like, I'm making a modeling page. What am I going to call it? And I was like, ooh, I'm going to name it Sack of Antlers just as a big fuck you. Hell yeah. Like, I love that. <laughs> I'm taking Wait. it back. Try and body shame me just once. And you know what? <laughs> fuck you, no. So time. <laughs> nice. um, does any, I don't know if anybody, uh, Leanne, have you heard of Sack of Antlers as a thing? Or is No, I've, I've heard of uh, being bony and bag of bones. I've been yeah. called all those things years ago when I was, bony <laughs> elizabeth elizabeth yeah. is it fair to say that your um your partner was um like like made up her own colloquialism uh or is this a thing you've heard elsewhere so i've had like two photographers know what it was okay they were all like oh it's for your rib cage okay and they were also they were all both art photographers too so maybe it's a thing in like the art photography world or like the art world but know. otherwise, no one has known it. But you're not. But let's. But to be. But you're not sack of antlers one one seven. So you snagged that shit. So maybe it's smaller than we think it is, right? Or yeah, or is yeah, it, yeah. Sack of antlers. Period. Is, like is there a sack it's of very antlers? Very unique. Yeah. I well, I love it. I love it. Um, and I like and I like your story with it. Um, mm -hmm. 
a, a lot. I like that it has a level of meaning to me personally, rather than it just being like a sexy pseudonym. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, and it, and it which is there's fun. nothing wrong with a sexy pseudonym, but this has personal meaning to me. And you're not wrong. Um, uh, skinny people are sharp. The, you, like she's not wrong. Like like. And, and <laughs> I was very. <laughs> yeah, and, I'm and, and, a little sharp. and it's good sharp sometimes. It depends on what you're into. We don't want to. We don't want to pick for anybody. Uh, if you like sharp, sharp's fun. Um, <laughs> How else do we find, follow, and pay for your content? Um, tell yeah, us all. Like your things. Instagram. Yeah. Your Instagram. Number one is Instagram, Sack of Antlers. Um, and then from there, I have my link tree where you can access everything else. But my OnlyFans is also Sack of Antlers. So it's pretty easy to find. Essentially, if you Google Sack of Antlers, everything that comes up is me. <laughs> And awesome. what can we expect? Let's do the thing since I since I made this declaration that I don't understand. Yeah. What, OnlyFans, what can we expect on your OnlyFans? Like A to B, what's, so, the, what's the spectrum? I will say I have not been very active on my OnlyFans. Um, I don't do as much as I, I'm like working up to doing more on there, to posting yeah. more. Um, there's definitely full nude on there, but there is not a lot of video content. Most of the video content that I will release will be sent as a pay-per-view video. I see. Yeah. which will be sent directly to your inbox. And then you can choose if it's something that you want to buy or not based off of the description. And I'll usually have like a short loop or like a, like a preview of it on the main feed. So you get an idea of what it's about. Have you and your boyfriend had to make rules, new rules, or did you just define what it is that you do? Um, but have you had to make rules to, or change things that you're doing um, to fit his comfort zone? So we've had a lot of conversations, but I would say that all of the changes that I have made are ones that I myself, so I'm a Taurus, which is like by nature, we're ridiculously loyal. And so the reason I stopped dancing is that I didn't feel comfortable dancing while I was in a relationship with someone that I loved. And that was because really just a me thing. What happens yeah, as long in a, as it's a you thing, that's great. But what happens, yeah. what happens in a strip club that, that can um, cross the line, I guess? Well, in a strip club, when I'm in that headspace, in that like, ooh, I'm sexy and like I'm letting all of this out and I'm showing my personality and expressing myself fully in this like intense way, that intensity can lead to connections and interactions. And like I, I'm in a different headspace and that's a headspace that I don't want to be in with someone that's not my partner when I'm partnered. So you're actively encouraging like very flirtatious. Yeah, you're actively encouraging super flirtatious stuff coming your way and you want to get out of that well, so that you can focus and also, on like there are there are different like styles of dancer, right? Like I'm sure you know about like the difference between like a VIP club and an urban club. Like there are ass shaking clubs and there are conversation clubs. And I've always been a conversation club kind of girl where like I'll I'll have men like fall in love with me over the course of an evening because right. I show just enough of my personality to pull them in and keep them interested in me yeah. as a person, not just as a sex object. Right. Mm -hmm. The first person I ever met way before I ever thought I would do a podcast about any of this space. The first person I met um, that was doing camming and this is way early camming. She made mm -hmm. all of her money by by sitting clothed and like chatting with people. That was where the, that yeah. was her, that was her like big, like her big payday. She was like, she wanted to be, she was uh, an aerialist and all these other things. And these, but the money day was sit down and chat with these people. And just for the record, since there are different styles of dancing, I want everybody to know I'm a dirty dancer. Um, <laughs> Leanne, how do we find you? How do we follow you? What do we, I, I have never asked you this. I don't even know the answer. What is on your only fans? Uh, my only fans has, it's mostly, that's a good combination of solo masturbation. I go all the way up to like squirting, full insertions with toys. There's no men. I do girl girl content. Um, it's not it, the girl girl content is kind of soft core, um, and I interact with my fans. It is. <laughs> I interact with my fans. They inbox me, and I respond to them. I send them voice notes. I'm pretty active. Will either of you do solo customs at this point in your career? I'm not doing anything that's like full masturbation um, just because I still like am debating if I'm ever going to use my bachelor's degree and I don't want to like cross a line I can't uncross. True. And we don't know what that line it's we're we're in a weird we're navigating a weird space where we have no idea what right? that line is. Every day I'm like will it will anybody care if I take a video <laughs> of me coming and putting on an OnlyFans? Will that have anything to do will it will it blow back on anywhere? And I don't know. I really don't know the answer. <laughs> Um, we're navigating. Well, if you're just masturbating, it certainly won't blow out anyone's back. 
<laughs> You've never seen me come. Don't don't make judgments. <laughs> Leanne, how do we follow you? At Levon Lux on Instagram. My backup page is Levon Lux Two. Uh, someone just started a fan page under my name Ooh. as well. I've gotten questions if I have a third page. It says Levon Lux fan page. I'm like, no, it has all of my own stuff. But you're it's happy with it being there. But it's not. I'm not running it. But you're happy that it's there. I mean, I'm flattered. Don't accidentally bit. follow that page, but hell yeah, let's go. I mean, you can follow it just as long as you know it's not me. Yeah, don't give it any money. <laughs> don't give that page any money. <laughs> no money I there. Don't me on any of my Instagram, so there you go. Elizabeth. You find me on, Let uh, me also plug my backup because I forgot to mention it. I just oh, yeah. made it because I was like, ooh, what if the Instagram police come after me? I should probably have a backup. What a so terrible thing we have to do. Yeah, sorry. Right? But it's at Sack of Antlers Backup. And um, my 25th birthday is coming up in less than a month or just about a month. When Amazon wish list. Less than a month. Amazon <laughs> wish list on my link tree. If you go to Sack of Antlers on IG, <laughs> get me something cute. Get me something fun. Cool. Make my birthday special. Hell yeah. Um, I just made a video <laughs> on uh, Instagram about how we're not doing the thing where we tell people what our next birthday is. Just say you're 24. Make it easy on the rest of us. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> When you're 25, you can be 25, God damn it. Uh, you're 24. But I want to be 25 now. I know. Stop it. Uh, oh, you're in that phase where you still want to be older. <laughs> 25 is a pinnacle. It does It does feel strong. Um, Age is I, just a summation of your experiences, right? Like, it's not that big a deal either way. You use sure. too big a words for me. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I, the I'm, academic coming out. I'm so impressed with uh, how much life you've lived up till this moment. I'm, I'm so happy that you came on and talked to us. I think oh, yeah. we could do 50 episodes with you um <laughs> yeah we have to have you back for sure we have to go deeper i love yeah. that this has been so much fun thank the you for having me the complexity real quick of this podcast has gone for it's changed names and it's changed things and, and and we're in a really good space and i'm really happy with leanne being on board and i'm happy that i'm out of an ego space that i that i can have her on board she asked me if she could be on board like a year two years ago and i was like no no way i'm the greatest and i'm not i'm not <laughs> and, I and like, I, okay cool i'm not and i need her and i'm happy that she's here uh me and leanne are active stroke. Me, Leanne, and Eric are actively trying to cancel the word porn star. Um, we don't think it applies to the world anymore. We think it's a weird thing. Um, so we're, we're, I don't know. And then until somebody tells us, no, we need that word, uh, we're trying to cancel it. This is the Sexy People Podcast. We're dropping a new episode once we start the new regime every Sunday. You can hear us all the places podcasts are. We have some content on YouTube with all the things. You can see all the pretty people. Um, and follow us, listen to us, do all the things. Tell us what you think is happening. And um, if you were here because you wanted to see uh, boobies, we we don't we don't need you um listen to what we have to say that's what we're trying but to do our only fans yeah yeah, yeah that's yeah, for that's go. for yeah instagram so, only yeah. fans yeah sorry yeah i sorry don't don't not want to see their boobies but this might not be the place for it go to the only fans <laughs> the boobies. i forgot you guys are selling boobies i'm, I'm sorry uh, <laughs> um what else does anybody have anything else they wanted to say that's it this has been a blast <laughs> this has been so much fun thank Great. you guys so much for inviting me and having me be a part of this thank Anytime. you all for being here thank you Eric for the behind the scenes and all the insight and all the things you bring to this thing um, yeah uh, listen and, and, and like and subscribe for more things bye <laughs>